Thank you for joining me today. Uh, before beginning uh, our meeting, I would like to remind you what we covered so far in this module. If you have a body on inclined surface, this body will be under the effect of weight and this weight will be in a vertical direction. Keep in your mind, I have to break this weight to two component, one parallel to the inclined surface and one perpendicular to the inclined surface. This will be done using the given angle for the surface, which is angle theta. So this one will be W sine theta, and this one will be W cosine theta. Keep in your mind this component, W sine theta, trying to push your body down so i should expect friction opposite to the direction of the movement this friction force equal mu time capital n and keep in your mind the value of the capital n any force or forces perpendicular to the surface of contact this is what we covered last meeting. In this meeting, I would like to highlight a very important point. We have two types of mu. We have one called static friction, coefficient. Uh, I mentioned before, mu is friction coefficient or coefficient of friction. We have two types of this coefficient. One is called the static, and the second one is called kinetic. Kinetic. Friction coefficient. So what I would like to cover today, I would like to highlight that we have two types of this coefficient. One is called the static friction coefficient and one is called kinetic friction coefficient. What is the main difference? Both of them, this one called mu s and this one is called mu k. Both of them can be multiplied with the capital N to figure out the friction. But keep in your mind, if you are using static friction coefficient, this one will be called the static friction. If you are using kinetic friction coefficient, this force will be called kinetic friction. What is the difference between this case and this case? The difference is very simple and very easy to understand it. If you have surface, if you have surface and your body over this surface, if you are pushing the body and the body did not move, in this case, this friction can be called static friction. Because the applied force, which is trying to push this body, uh, the body did not move. In this case, this friction will be called static friction. And the mu, which is the contact of friction, or I'm sorry, the coefficient of friction between the body and the surface, is called the static friction coefficient. But... If you have a body under the effect of a force and this force succeeded to push this body and this body is moving, even the body is moving, we still have friction also. 
I know the body is moving, the body is sliding. However, we still have friction. Trying to be in the opposite direction for the direction of movement. In this case, since the body is moving, this friction will be called the kinetic friction. And the value of coefficient of friction, which is called kinetic friction coefficient, will be mu k. I have question and I need one of you to answer this question. Do you think the kinetic friction is bigger or the static friction? Anybody can tell me which one will be bigger? What do you think? Any help? Guys, anybody can tell me which one will be bigger, the static friction or the kinetic friction? Let me explain it in a different way. The kinetic friction. I mean, the static friction, sorry. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, the static friction is bigger. For one reason, guys, if you have your disk, you can do this experiment right now. You have your disk. And you are trying to push your disc with a force to move it. I think, I think, once this disc start to slide, I believe the resistance from the ground will be smaller. Do you agree? Before this disc or before this table, before movement, before moving, you are experience, uh, you are experiencing a large or bigger resistance from the ground, from the friction. But once the disc start to slide, you are feeling that you need only to apply a little force to push it. Do you know why? Because the friction before sliding is bigger than the friction after sliding or during sliding. And this is the meaning why the static friction is greater than the kinetic friction. Okay, so I would like, on, uh, I, I, I do like only to highlight this difference to explain that if your body did not slide, did not move, we have friction. Even if the body start to slide and the movement started, we still have friction. And the value still mu time n, and the value still mu time n, but your value of mu here is kinetic, and your value of mu here is called the static. But the same meaning. Does that make sense? The first example I have, we have this car, and hopefully this will not happen for you or me. And we would like to figure out how much towing force this car will be towed. So we need to figure out uh, how much is this force if, which is applied to the front of the car with angle theta equal 30 degree. And we are given the weight of the car 20,000 Newton. And we are given that mu static equal 0.3. So the problem is asking for what is the minimum value of F that will move or will force this car to move. So keep in your mind, this car has a weight. How much? 20,000 Newton. And the surface of contact is a horizontal surface. This one. Keep in your mind, I have to break any force to two component, one parallel to the surface and one perpendicular to the surface. And this is the reason why I will break F to two components. One 
if cosine 30 and 1 if sine 30. The two components, one parallel to the surface of contact and one perpendicular. So keep in your mind the horizontal component, which is f cosine 30, is trying to, to move this car to left. So I should expect friction to right. This is the direction of your friction force. That makes sense? So can you tell me what is the value of this friction? Equal mu static because the car did not move yet time capital N. The value of mu is given 0.3. Anybody in this meeting can tell me what will be the value of capital N? Any vertical force or any vertical forces perpendicular to the surface of contact. So what will be the value of capital N? Any help? It will be 20,000 Newton minus F sine 30. Unfortunately, the direction of this component, which is perpendicular to the surface of contact, is opposite to the direction of the weight, 20,000. So the 20,000 will be, uh, will subtract, we will subtract F sine 30 from 20,000 to figure out the value of capital N. So your friction will be something like this. 0.3 times 20,000 equal 6,000 minus 0.3 times sine 30 equal 0.15. F. This is the value of the friction. If you would like, if you would like this car to move your F cosine 30, which is the horizontal component of the no. towing well, force. Was Fred Daddy making something? Uh, no, not, I think, yeah, he, I think he just, he's planning to make something, but he hasn't done it yet. David, 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 you are online right now and I'm hearing everything. So guys, make sure you are <laughs> mute yourself. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Uh, so the friction force, the, I'm sorry, the, uh, the horizontal component of the towing force must be greater than the friction force. If you would like to move this car, the applied force must be greater than the friction force. So if cosine 30 must be greater than 6,000 minus 0.15 F. So I would like to make F in one side and everything on the other side. So I think cosine 30 equal 0.86. If you move the disk value to the other side, you will have 1.016 F greater than 6,000. So F must be greater than 5,905.4 Newton. We need to apply a towing force greater than this value because if the applied force f is equal or smaller than this value the car will not move do you know why because the horizontal component in this case will equal the friction or smaller than the friction so the friction will be bigger 
that means a car will not move. So if you would like to tow this car and make it to move, I have to apply a towing force if greater than 5905.4 newton. Okay, so this is the solution of the problem. The only trick here, and be careful when you are trying to find the friction force, mu time capital N, your capital N, any forces perpendicular to the surface. We have 20,000 coming down. We have F sine 30 coming up. So I have to subtract both of them. So your friction is not a value, it's a function of F. And your applied force, the horizontal component of the towing force, must be greater than the friction force to push this car to move. So I have two sides. I moved the negative 0.15F to the other side. I got 1.016F greater than 6,000. So F will be greater than 5905.4 meters. The second example, we have a man, looks like old man, trying to drag this box, and this box has a weight 1000 Newton uh, up the ramp of a truck. Looks like he is moving and he renting a u-hole to move so he is trying to move this box with 1000 newton weight up the ramp of the truck the ramp has inclination angle 20 degree and the man is pulling the box with angle theta equal 30 so be careful we have two angles right now the first angle theta equal 20 for the ramp, for the surface of contact. And we have another angle theta equal 30 for the force that is pulling the box. The coefficient of friction between the box and the ramp equal 0.2. This is mu. What is the minimum force this man need to apply to make this box to move. So what is the minimum force the man would have to apply to pull the crate up the ramp? This question is very interesting question and we will solve it one by one. But be careful when we are drawing the free body diagram. Just a moment. Okay, I need to free something, maybe this one. Okay. So I will start to draw the free body diagram. So everybody please pay more attention. Here is the inclined surface with angle theta equal 20. And here is the box. This box has a weight in a vertical direction equal 1000 Newton. Keep in your mind, I need to break this 1000 Newton to something parallel and something perpendicular to the surface of contact. This will happen using the angle theta, which is 20 degrees. So the weight component in this direction will be 1000 sine 20. And the weight in this direction will be 1000 cosine 20. So 1000 pi sine 20 equal 342. 1000 time cosine 20 equal 939.7.
so far so good so far so good and also i would like to draw another draft here another free body diagram to make sure no overlap keep in your mind that we have a force applying uh, we have applying a force if how much i don't know with angle theta equal 30 degree with the direction of the surface of contact so if you would like to break this force to parallel component and the vertical component this component will be f cosine 30 and this component will be f sine 30. Does that make sense? So this free body diagram, I, bro I broke the weight component. I'm sorry, I broke the weight to two components, one barrel and one uh, perpendicular. In this one, I broke the applied force with angle theta equal 30 to two components, one barrel and one vertical. Keep in your mind, both of them at the same time. So if you would like, I have this box. I have this component of the weight, 342. I have this component of the weight, 939.7. 342 and 939.7. At the same time, I have this force in this direction, F cosine 30 and this direction f sine 30 which is coming from this applied force by the man does that make sense so this man trying to pull or drag this box up so the direction of movement is up so this box will move up the ramp so I believe 100% that the friction will be in opposite direction. This is the direction of your friction. Does that make sense? This will be the direction of your friction. Because the direction of movement up the ramp. So the friction will be in opposite direction. This friction equal mu time capital N. The value of mu of this problem is given by 0.2. What is the value of capital N? Be careful. Capital N, any force or any forces perpendicular to the surface of contact. Looks like we have two forces. One is 939.7 coming down. And the one coming up will be subtracted F sine 30 so the friction force you can simplify it will be 939.7 times 0.2 i got 187.9 minus 0.1 f this is your friction force this is the value of the friction force, 187.9 minus 0.1F. If you look to this free body diagram and to make sure this block or this box to move up, I have to make sure that F cosine 30, this component of the force, is greater than the friction force plus 342 this component because this component and the friction both of them in the same direction so both of them will be added the applied force the component of the applied force f cosine 30 must be greater than these to be able to move this box up so F cosine 30 is 0.86. 
must be greater than the friction force 187.9 minus 0.1F plus 342. Go ahead and do your, your simplification. So I will move this part to the other side. It will be 0.96F is greater than this value plus this value. It will be 187.9 plus 342. I got 529.9. So the value of F must be greater than divided by 0.96. 551.9 Newton. This man need to apply a force F at least greater than, not at least, greater than 551.9 Newton to succeed to move this box up the ramp of the truck. That makes sense? I would like to repeat it one more time. So guys, in this problem, I have two forces. The first one is the weight of the crate, which is vertically downward. I broke it to two components, one parallel and one perpendicular to the surface of contact. We have another force applied by this man with angle theta equal 30. So I break this force to two components, one parallel and one vertical. Keep in your mind the force and the weight, both of them exist at the same time. So the final conclusion, this is your final conclusion. We have this force, this component of the weight, this force component, this force component, and this component of the weight. To figure out the friction, make sure and be careful. This block is moving up. So the friction will be in opposite direction, moving it down. How much? Mu ca time capital N. Mu is 0.2 capital N. Any force perpendicular to the surface. We have this one and this one in opposite direction. So this one minus this one will give you the capital N. So I have the value of the friction force. To make sure this block is moving up, any force coming to this direction must greater than any force coming to the opposite direction. So F cosine 30 must be greater than the friction force and the component of the weight 342. I set up my equation. I found that F must be greater than 551.9 Newton. This is the minimum force that will be applied by this man to succeed, to pull or to drag this crate up the ramp of the truck. Anybody has any question so far? Do you have any question so far? I have another example here for the leader. We have a uniform 100 Newton leader shown rests against the smooth. Be careful about this expression. Smooth means no friction. Wall at B. So at this point B, we don't have friction. And the end A is rested on rough horizontal plane. Uh, plane. Uh, this rough means we have friction. And the coefficient of friction equal 0.3. We need to determine the angle theta of the leader and the normal reaction at B if the leader is on the verge of sliding or slipping. This leader almost to slide. That makes sense? So the most important part to solve this problem is drawing the free body diagram. This is the leader. This leader has a weight at this point equal 100 Newton. And if this leader is sliding, assume 
if it's a sliding, I think this end will move to the left. So I should expect the friction this way because this surface is rough. Besides, we have reaction from the leather on the ground, which will be capital N at A. At this point B, we have smooth surface. So no friction at B. So the only, uh, 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 the only force at this end will be horizontal reaction coming on the coming from the wall to the leader capital n at b so guys keep in your mind and be careful and read your problem careful b the contact between the leader and the wall this wall is smooth so no friction because point b when the sliding happen point a will move to the left and the point B will move to down. So I don't have friction at B because it's a smooth surface. I have friction at A opposite to the direction of movement, so it will be to right. Besides, the leader is rested on this wall and this wall, so we have reaction like this and we have reaction like this. This is called free body Diagram. I am showing everything affecting on this leader. One more time. I did not provide any friction force at B because it's smooth. I have weight of the leader, so the weight is located at the midpoint, 100 Newton downward. At point A, I will have friction opposite to the direction of sliding. I have reactions perpendicular to the wall or the ground in this case and the perpendicular to the wall in this case capital NB and the capital NA then I will start to solve this problem one by one if you apply summation f of x equals zero because this slide or this ladder is stable no sliding happened yet so if you apply summation f of x equals zero, your friction and your NB are the two forces in x direction. Before doing this, this friction force will equal mu time capital NA. This friction force equal the force perpendicular to the surface, which is capital NA, time mu which is 0.3 so this friction force will be 0.3 na so if you apply summation f of x equals zero i have positive 0.3 na minus nb equals zero this is the first question this one and this one if you apply summation f of y equals zero what forces do you have in y direction we have negative 100. We have positive NA equals zero. So the reaction NA will be 100 Newton. If you go back here and put NA equal 100 Newton, I can find out the value of NB. It will be 30 Newton. That means I can figure out the friction force equal 0.3 times capital NA, which is 100. It will be 30 Newton. That makes sense? So this force on the wall equal 30 Newton. This force of the friction equal 30 Newton. This reaction on the, on the ground surface equal 100 Newton. So far, so good. Keep in your mind, I'm looking for what is the value of this angle theta. We still have one more equilibrium equation, summation moment at any point equal zero. Summation f of x, summation f of y, summation moment at any point equal zero. 
if you take moment at A, for example, this point A. So I have to lift everything. Your friction, force, which equal 30, time distance. Your capital in A, time distance. 100 Newton, time distance. NB time distance equal zero. Does that make sense? So, one by one, what is the distance between your friction force and the point A zero? Your capital N A and the point A zero. What is the distance between 100 Newton and the point A? Anybody can tell me what is the distance between this midpoint and the point A? Be careful. Your weight in a vertical direction. Your distance must be in a horizontal direction. Does that make sense? So this horizontal distance, I think, will be 2 cosine theta. Why 2? Because this distance will be 2 meters. Because the whole distance is 4. If you multiply 2 meter by cosine, you can get the horizontal distance between this point and this point. So your horizontal distance will be 2 cosine theta. What is the distance between NB and the point A? Since your NB is here in a horizontal direction and the point A is here, so I'm looking for vertical direction. What is the vertical direction between point A and the point B? This vertical direction will equal 4 sine theta. This term will be cancelled. This term will be cancelled. I assume the clockwise rotation is my positive. So this one will be positive and this one will be negative. The only unknown in this equation is your angle theta. So I can solve for the angle theta. It will equal 59.04 degree. Does that make sense? So this kind of problem is a mix of rigid body equilibrium and the friction. This is a mix. Why rigid body equilibrium? Because we used the equilibrium equations to figure out the reactions. Summation f of x equals 0, summation f of y equals 0, summation moment at any point equals 0. The only part I use the friction at point A. I expect this leader to slide to left, so the friction will be to right. This is the direction of your friction force. How much? Equal the vertical reaction here, perpendicular to the surface of contact, time mu. So it will be point 3 time capital NA, which is the reaction here. And we have only one reaction at this wall because this wall is smooth. No friction. So the only reaction here will be perpendicular to the wall. We have three reactions. I can find them. And we have angle theta uh, is unknown. So I can find all of them by applying the three problem equations. And I figured out all of them. The reactions and the angle theta. Do you have any questions so far? I will leave this problem. It's a little bit uh, complicated because we have different assumptions. We need to assume uh, one uh, solution and uh, we can check it and we can use assume another solution and we need to check it. So I will leave it for you to think about it, but I will solve this problem. This problem is good. Have a good idea. We have two blocks, one at A and one at B. Uh, the block at A has a weight equal 30 Newton. And the block at B has a weight equal 90 Newton. And the, both of them, the two weights are connected to weightless 
links as shown. We have a link CB, we have a link AC without weight, weightless. So we will ignore the weight of these two links. We need to determine the largest vertical force. How much force we can apply here? That can be applied at pin C without causing any movement. If you can imagine, if you apply a vertical force here at C, this point will move down. So if the for this point moved it down, I think the point A will move to the left and the point B will move to the right. Uh, I'm sorry, to the left also. Or to the right, whatever. That makes sense? So we need to figure out uh, the maximum force, the largest force, vertical force P that can be applied at C. And we are given the value of friction coefficient mu S equal 0.3. This problem can be solved by drawing the free body diagram. First of all, at point C, this point C has a vertical force P, and we have this link with a force F AC, and we have this link with a force. F B C because this one is link and this one is also link so these members looks like truss members so I will have a force here and I will have a force here so keep in your mind the angle of this force is given 30 degree if you go back to module number 2 I will apply summation f of x equals zero, summation f of y equals zero to find out how much is the force BC, how much is the force AC. Let's see. If you apply summation f of x equals zero, I have negative FBC, I have positive FAC, sine third equals zero. If you apply summation f of y equals zero, I have negative p, I have positive fac cosine third equals zero. From this one, fac will equal positive one point fifteen p. I found this force, FAC, as a function of P. And if you go back with FAC here and put 1.15 P times sine 30, the value of FBC will equal 0.58 P. That makes sense? And I found this value is positive and this value is positive. That means this direction is correct. How much? 0.58p. And this direction is correct. How much? 1.15p. Keep in your mind, this direction will be in opposite direction here and the same value. And this direction will be in opposite direction here with the same value. So I have a value here be, will be 1.15p and I will have a value here 0.58p. So the first start or the first step of this problem, joint equilibrium. This is what we learned in module number two. Second part, if you look to block A, so, I will start with block A. Here is block A. And here is the ground surface. We have a force 1.15P. 
with angle 30 like this. And we have a weight for this block equal 30 Newton. That makes sense? This is the free body diagram for block A. This force 115P, well, I'm sorry, this force 1.15P coming from this length, which is coming from the applied force P that I found it from joint equilibrium at point C. Does that make sense? So these kind of problem are, com uh, are composite or compound problems that coming from different modules. They, now I'm working on block A. We have this force, we have this weight. This force will be broken to two components, one horizontal and one vertical. The horizontal one will be 1.15p sine 30. And the vertical one would be 1.15 p cosine 30. Keep in your mind, this horizontal component trying to push block A to left. So I should expect the friction to the right in the opposite direction. This friction will equal mu time capital N. Mu is given for this problem equal 0.3. Capital N in this case for this block will be this force and this component, both of them in the same direction. So 30 plus 1.15 P cosine 30. So the final value for the friction force will be, uh, this one will be uh, 9.3 time 30 will be, I'm sorry, 0.3 times 30 will be 9. Plus 0.3 times 1.15 times cosine 30 equal 0.3p. This is the friction force. If you would like to make this block almost to slide so the applied force from this component must equal the friction force, almost to slide. Or if you would like to make this uh, block A to slide, so this force, 1.15 P sine 30, must be greater than this friction force. So 1.15 P sine 30 must be greater than 9 plus 0.3p. Go ahead and define the value of p. Your value of p, I think it will be 9 divided by 1.15 times sine 30. No, wait. 1.15 times sine 30 minus 0.3 divided by 9 will be 32.7 Newton. If you would like to make this block A to slide, I have to apply a force P here, how much? Greater than 32.7 Newton. If you would like this block A not to slide, not to slide without movement, the force B must be smaller than, or at least equal. Equal is okay, 32.7 Newton. No sliding at A. If B greater, so sliding at A will, will, will occur. That makes sense? So this is for block A. I will do the same for block B and see what will happen. For block B. Here is the surface. Here is block B. This block B has a weight equal 90 Newton. And this block B is connected to this link. So we have a force coming from this link equal 0.58 P. 
if this block will move under the effect of the force coming from the link, will move to right. So I should expect the friction in the opposite direction to left. This friction will equal mu time capital N. Mu is given in this problem equal 0.3. Capital N, this problem, we have only this one, 90. So the value will be 27 Newton. If you would like this block to slide 0.58p, I'm sorry, not to slide. So 0.58p must be smaller than or at least equal the friction. So 0.58p must be smaller than 27 Newton. If you would like this block B not to slide. So the value of B must be smaller than or equal 27 divided by 0.58 will be 46.6 Newton. So guys, if you would like block B not to slide, the, the maximum force I can put it here is 46.6. So this block will not slide. But if you would like block A not to slide, the maximum force I can put 32.7. This block will not slide. The final conclusion, the maximum force I can put without any sliding at A or B will be 32.7 Newton. This force will guarantee, will guarantee no sliding occur at any. A or B. Does that make sense? So this problem is a little bit uh, complicated, but you have to think about it. The first step to think about this problem, at the point C, we have two links and the applied force. I solved this point C. I did, I did joint equilibrium to find out the force in this link. This force will be here also in the opposite direction with the same value. And this force in this link will be the same, but in opposite direction on the other side of the same link. Then I work it with this block alone, block uh, B, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, block A first. And then I work it with block B after you work it with block A, I found the minimum force or the maximum force that can be applied uh, equal 32.7. I cannot go up uh, more than this force because if you move, if you go up, the uh, sliding will occur at A. For block B, I did also equilibrium. So I found the friction force and I found the, the maximum force B that can be applied. This force B can be 46.6 or less. I cannot go above this value because above this value, the block B will uh, slide. So I have two values. One will satisfy block A and one will satisfy block B. I'm going to use the force that will satisfy both of them, which is the minimum value. This minimum value is called the maximum value that can be applied without movement. That makes sense? 